I've been thinking about how I can make my Leak Code experience better. Leak Code's about solving problems. The interface kind of steers you towards answering just the tests that they give you. I wanted to use playgrounds to kind of think through all of the edge cases and really get everything out of the problems I'm solving I can. So I spent quite a long time today thinking about how I can achieve that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hello, this is a video about solving leak code problems using playgrounds and testing. So to enable that, I've got two sum up on the screen and that's the problem I'm going to attempt to solve. So I'm just creating a new playground in Xcode. I'm going to call my file to sum. And let's just check that the playground's working. Click run. It's looking good. We go use leak code solution class. So it's exactly the same as if we were using the leak code interface. Let's just check this does print to the console. Okay, if it does this sometimes, I'm going to close playground, just open the file again. Let's just try and run it. Okay, so I'm using the solution class. I'm going to return the empty array at first. So I'm going to have to import XC test and I'm going to create my own test class, which is going to inherit from XC test case. So I need to set up an instance of solution. And we're going to have our test functions, which is going to be example one, and it's going to be the same example as leak code had given us here. So I do XC test assert equal. This is where I'm going to take my answer. Make sure I get the inputs right. And because I can return the answer in any order, I'm going to sort my output. And I'll do the same with my expected output. And since I'm using the same algorithm, that is the one in Xcode that Swift has given us, I'm pretty sure that it will work, no matter if my answer is in the incorrect order. So our target here is six. sort both my answer and the expected answer. Test example three. Target six. And the output is going to be Okay, and then I need to tell Xcode that I want to run my tests. Default test suite, run. And hopefully all three are going to fail. That's good, that's reassuring, because the empty array is not equal to any of the answers. So the challenge is, given an array of integers, nums and a target, return the indices of two numbers such as they add up to the target. So here the target is nine, two and seven add up to nine, so you'd output zero and one. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution. So as soon as we find that solution, we can go and return it. 
and you may not use the same element twice, which is useful because it means we can use a dictionary for this. So we need to store two things. We need to store the target and the offset. So we walk along the array and you want to store the new target you're looking for, which will be the target minus the number you have. So when we're looking for seven, nine minus two is seven. So you know you're looking for seven, but you also need to store the offset. All becomes clear when we have the code. So I'm going to call my dictionary target offset. And at first it's going to be empty. So we walk through the array, but I need to know the index we're on. So I'm going to use enumerated. So if let, so if we already have our element, as in if we're looking for our, the element that we're currently on, we've found everything and we can return our current offset and return the offset that's been stored in the dictionary. If not, then we're in the situation perhaps we're on the first number, we're not looking for anything. So in that case, target offset is going to be populated with the key as in target minus element. So in the first example, we're on two. So we tell our dictionary, we store in the dictionary as the key that we're looking for seven because nine minus two is seven. So the target is nine, we're currently on two. So that's our key. And we need to store our offset, which is num.offset. And it's that which is returned here. So if I click run now, with the wind behind me, there's a chance that we'll pass some tests. Three tests passed with no failures. Now we're in a situation where we can just take our solution, copy it, paste it into leak code, and hopefully get a good answer. Now, you might argue we shouldn't be returning the empty array here, but it clearly says there's exactly one solution. So I'm pretty confident that this runs in leak code and passes all of their tests, not just the examples, but any others. But you might be advised to create some of your own tests cases here and test the edge cases, particularly on the more tricky leak code problems.